People, welcome to my new series. We're going to be calling it Chatting and Crafting, mostly because y'all failed to come up with a better name. Anyhow, in this series, we're going to be doing anything TDS related. And in case you don't know what TDS is, that's the DIY struggle. And currently, the only thing I've actually released is the decoupage papers. But I also do have napkin bundles that are on the website. So if you're interested in seeing napkin things in this little special as well, or this little series, let me know in the comments. Since it's the first of the series, I just want to kind of go over that nothing on the channel is going to change as far as the DIY Fridays. We're still going to be having Every Friday, I'm going to post a DIY video. I'm still going to have the Tutorial Tuesdays coming out each month. And I'm still going to have the Paint With Me's, which I just started picking up now that my kids are back at school. These little chat and craft and whatever I'm putting the title. <laughs> as we say, I'm rolling, making this up as I go along. This series is going to specifically be dedicated to TDS products or anything I'm really selling on the website. So this way, if you're looking for ideas or information on any of that stuff, I'll have it in a playlist so it is easily accessible to you. After putting a lot of thought into this, I realized that I want to keep my DIY videos still completely related to whatever it is I'm doing, wood projects, glass, you know, hacks, whatever. If I want to use some of my products in there, I absolutely will. But I don't want to turn it into me, you know, pushing products on you on Friday. So I'm just going to do that here. <laughs> just kidding. You don't have to buy the products. Just come hang out with me. I'm just sharing different things with you as always. And this is just a good way for you guys to see how I use the products, things that I'm doing with them. And hopefully it gives you some inspiration. And if not nothing else, maybe you just want to be entertained for 20 or 30 minutes. But this is also going to be the series where if I have new pieces come out, I'll be sharing that with you all. I will be doing projects with them. This is my newest print that just came out. It's super pretty. I absolutely love it. I decided to film it <laughs> laying down so you guys could see it a little bit better. And then I also came out with this one called Her Umbrella. It's absolutely gorgeous. The prints on these and the designs came out so flawlessly. I'm really, really happy with these. I can't wait to use those. However, <laughs> that's not what we're going to be working with today. <laughs> this one is the one we're going to be working with today. So I actually have some pieces that I've already made. And if you haven't seen some of those in videos, I'm going to pop them up here and share them for you. But the one that I really want to work with today is this larger piece and I'd really like to use this one. So I love these. If you've never decoupaged with tissue paper, bless you Harley. <laughs> Sorry. She is just see her. She's a, she's a hot mess. She's on my butt all the time. Your animals like that. Um if you have not decoupaged with tissue paper, this is super easy to use. I absolutely love this stuff. Let's hop one into my workspace. I have a few other pieces around here and it is, I've been transitioning. <laughs> in case you couldn't tell from the background, we were just sitting in. Here is one of the pieces I did a couple weeks back and this is just on a canvas and it turned out so pretty. I blended in the little decoupage paper into the canvas so it just looks like it's one piece. This one I just put on a frame and put a little bit of Mod Podge on the front of our little piece, the design, da, da, da. <laughs> the design here, and it stuck really well. It's beautiful. You can't even really see any of the Mod Podge around it. This I just made because honestly, <laughs> this was the block I wanted this for. I had this little black block just kind of sitting. I got it on clearance for 99 cents at a... um where like you know how you got little stores in your area that have like just random little pieces well that's kind of what this was and I when I was designing this I was like that would be perfect for a little fall banner thing and I just popped some black on the sides I did seal over it you can see that the paper this is just Mod Podge if you look really close you can slightly see if I move it where the paper ends 
So you can absolutely take white paint, go over it, you know, pop some designs, and it just blends into whatever your background is. You can't tell where the paper, you know, ends and where the project itself starts. And this one, <laughs> this was actually my favorite piece. And then I messed up and burned that. <laughs> I... I melt well I don't I didn't burn it but I melted it okay I melted it I was getting a little extra with um the heat gun when I put the sealer over it and I was talking you know the kids distracted me and and <laughs> just anyhow this turned out really pretty and it's also blended in really well around the edges this is just the white background and I did take white paint and go over if you look really really close you can slightly see where the paper ends and we blended it in. So the tissue paper works really well, even just, you know, putting some paint over it and blended it in. And as you can see, this is sealed over, like I said, blame it on the kids. For the two designs today that I want to use, which is this one right here and this one that I just shared with you, I want to put this on a book and I have a big old book for it and I want to put the other one on a faux fence decor piece. So we're going to use these. And yes, I'm even going to use the top, which I don't always do, but I think they'll make good fake fences without me having to cut cut wood. I'm going to prep all this off camera so this way you don't have to, you know, watch me do all that. But all I'm going to do is just take our wrapper off here and I'm going to paint this white and then I'm going to glue all of these together, okay? People want to hear a funny story for those of you that I know hang out in my chat with me. And if you don't, well, you're about to hear a funny story. Um, my laptop has been broke and I recently got a new one, literally within the last like day or so. <laughs> my tripod broke. I cannot win at all. Like shit is always happening to me. <laughs> like. I swear, like, everybody that knows me is like, Brandy, if it can happen, it happens to you. And it sure does. I just, I'm like sitting here trying to address the tripod. I'm like, I just got the laptop fixed and now this shit. Okay, anyhow. Um, so I put our little fence together. And if you're not familiar with me, I cannot stand this. I cannot stand doing DIYs with paint sticks and leaving these on. So the only reason 4,000% that I'm literally leaving them on for this project is because it's a fence and it makes sense. Most of the time it just looks tacky to me. It's a personal preference. You want to leave them on like I'll always chop the bits off. If these ain't long enough, I get the longer ones. You know what I mean? They're really woo, the big ones. You can tear this paper just like this. There's nothing wrong with tearing this paper. It tears super easy and you can use a wet paintbrush with a little bit of water on it and that works just as well also this right here <laughs> when I did my first project and that I had so many people that are like did you mean to do that yes it was a joke I thought it was funny especially because you know it's me and I'm <laughs> creating decoupage paper however some people did not think that it was funny and um, I fixed it. So all the new prints that I have in the store at the moment, they are, um, they're, they're spelled correctly. I really want to put the bottom of the fence pieces on here. I feel like this is just not going to look finished if it doesn't have that one there. I am almost positive I'm going to cuss myself out later for that, but I'm going to leave it and then... Or, ooh, I have an idea. People, we can just cut. I wanted to keep it up for decorative purposes, but we're just going to cover over it. And then my piece of it in here. We're just going to do it. We're going to be rebels, right? Yeah, let's do it. Look at that. Didn't matter that I wanted to keep them anyway. We're still going to fit on here. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. All right, so let's get to going. So one thing that I think is awesome about this tissue paper that is completely different than if you're working with a napkin, you can keep, I always have this little gem. Did y'all know the Dollar Tree sold these? I mean, now I'm fancy schmancy too. And I have one of these from, um, I got off Amazon. It's actually got no water in it. And I don't know why I feel like I have to do this right now, but I'm just spreading the water. I don't know why. You just... 
Um, but yeah, so you can use water to actually smooth this out. And you can also use, I have little sponges. These are usually in my decoupage kits, but I'm probably not going to have any more kits until the first of the year. I have a lot of other. So those of you, I was going to come out with a Christmas one, um, but I just, I'm not going to be able to, unfortunately, but I will have new decoupage kits for sure next year and throughout the rest of the year. To apply this and the book, we're just going to be using some Mod Podge in the mat. I do want to get a hold of some liquid patina. Angela Jones loves that stuff and she talks about it all the time. I want to get a hold of some of that and try it. I haven't actually used it. I'm a huge fan of Mod Podge and I really like the deco art decoupage that's up here on the shelf. And to apply our Mod Podge, I'm just going to do the same thing and use a fan brush like I do with the napkin. So I just really like using fan brushes whenever I'm doing thin you know, pieces like a napkin or some tissue paper. It just works out the best for me. And again, you can put a couple spritz on here. This is just going to make your decoupage paper a little bit more pliable. And I'm going to start from the center, I think, on this one and work my way down. So this way I have our paper in the exact spot but I think I'm gonna move this down and we'll just have to cut off a little bit more of that blue pumpkin uh, a little bit more I think I don't want to cut too much of the blue pumpkin and the sunflowers off there we go we're just gonna have to work with that I'm just gonna peel this up and put a little squirt and everybody does their decoupage completely different. Whenever I'm working with tissue paper or napkins, I like to say less is more. Just applying stuff, it allows me to be a little bit more ginger with getting a wrinkle-free application. But don't let me stop you from using an iron oil method. You could absolutely use that with this tissue paper as well. That's another thing. I mean, obviously, if you're doing it on wood don't try and use no iron oil method on glass and be like brandy from the diy struggle so this is okay no no she did not okay no she did not get a nice little layer on here and then we're just going to pull it oh we don't want to go sideways what's wrong with you then we're just going to smooth it out and like i said you can pop water on here smooth it out and don't feel where's my oh i had a little piece of cling wrap sitting around here listen I'll be right back. All right, I got a new one. Okay, and I'm just gonna use clean, and you can pull this, pull it up, don't be afraid. Pull it up, pull it down, and it works so nicely. And just, you can take your, I mean, if you want, take your time. You ain't gotta, you know, be wild with it. Gently rub too. I have a lot of people asking a lot of questions. Just be, you don't have to, some, for some reason, somewhere along the line, a huge question I get is like, um, do I have to do the whole thing and apply? No, you do not. I don't know where the miscommunication for some odd reason with decoupage was like, we have to put the medium all over the whole surface and then apply. No, you don't. Because a lot of beginners, if you've never decoupaged before, and I know this from firsthand experience because <laughs> I was a beginner too at one point, the more you use of an area and then try and apply a section, it is real possible, especially if you're using Mod Podge, this stuff dries so quick. So it is real possible if I were to put a nice thick layer on this, a section might have dried that I already put it on and... I might have globier spots. So if I'm trying to go like this gingerly over our piece to apply it, there's a huge glob of Mod Podge and I'm just gonna rip it. So I like to do little sections. Now it depends if you're, it depends on what you're using, honestly. Fabric, that's a whole different ball game. Thick paper, that's a whole different ball game. But, oh, see? Look, look at that. I obviously had too much Mod Podge in that little section right there and just using this. So be careful, okay? This is why y'all hang out with me because I'm just letting y'all know you wanna make sure that you're being mindful with that. 
And I personally don't like going over my pieces with Mod Podge until they're completely dry because stuff like this, it's already thin. You feel me? It's already thin. We already have a nice thin layer. It's already delicate and fragile. We don't want to make any more mistakes. So I like to allow the paper and tissues to completely dry before I go and apply a sealer over it. But you do you, and it is very delicate, so like I said, just be mindful of it when you're applying. But that's why, you know, I try to give you all the best tips that I know how to make sure your application is as flawless as it can be. I'm just pulling down the top layer now, squirting a little bit, and then we're just going to push it up. And that's one reason I also like using the fan brushes, as we can just push in if you have your paper flip like this because I like doing little section by little section the top of this is super thin so it's just pressing right up against where we had it attached last you feel what I'm saying if you're using and I've showed this before but I like to show this again because not everybody sees everything I put out okay so anybody that is watching all of them you get tired of me repeat myself you just be patient because everybody's got to learn okay you already learned this let me teach somebody now so if you're using a thicker brush like this you see how it's a thick wide and you're pushing Mod Podge or trying to push Mod Podge under it you're not actually getting underneath the tissue paper. What you're doing is you're also putting, sorry about this movie and I'm so sorry. Um, you're actually putting Mod Podge up on here and know from personal experience, it will attach to the top of that. And when you try to peel it back, guess what? It's already attached to the front section. So the fan brushes have a really thin angle. They get under there without putting any extra Mod Podge on the top that's bent and it just works better i trust me i've used a bunch of different techniques over the years and brushes and things like that um there is a certain type of brush i'm not sure what it's called but i've seen um i want to say one of my favorite content creators and i really even want to get her set she makes beautiful um furniture art bella Rene blah, blah, blah. chris donna from bella renovare i know i always botch her stuff but she has her own paint brushes and she has this one brush that i think would be just perfect for decoupage and i really want to get a hold of it or at least something like it and give it a go I'm going to pop this over to the side to dry and we're going to start on our book. Here we go. Here's our pretty book. And don't let me start fronting. I didn't paint the bottom. <laughs> Listen, girls got to do what she's got to do. Put out content. Okay. But the part that I'm worried about that's going to show, we're going to, we're going to do this. Okay. Look how pretty. I cannot wait. I have been dying to use this one. Um, let me know in the comments below where you guys are from. I actually don't ask that very often, but I often have people tell me where they're from and it always interests me. I had a couple people place some orders on the website from um, California and then one was in um, Texas and I, when I had went to the post office, it was really funny. The woman was like, you have people all over the place. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess I never really thought about that. But let me know in the comments below where you're watching from. And thank you all for hanging out. I just put a nice little stripe in the center here. And we are going to do the same thing here. Just grab our paper. I want this to be pretty much as centered as I can get it, I guess, to keep our keep our whole design on here as much as possible. I just flipped this over like we did in the fence and I'm just coming down a little bit with the Mod Podge and then I'm gonna stop. And let me know in the comments below if you guys have a printer and you guys like digital downloads. I can also, I have rice paper that I use. I can use tissue paper as well and print out some of the digital downloads that I have that um, 
I have some designs on there. So let me know if you guys are also interested in that because I'd be happy to do that. I love working with those as well. I haven't did any in a while. There's so many things that I want to make people. Do y'all ever feel like that? Like you just have so much stuff you want to make and time just goes by when you feel like it's taking forever and then before you know it it's like Christmas. It's literally almost Christmas. Quick, quick, quick little tip. I get asked often if I leave the covers on or why I leave the covers on. And if I do just the book, people, it's a preference. Okay, please don't start me lying to you saying one works better than the other. Honestly, it's paper to me. Like, even though I know, like, that this is, like, cardboard, obviously, and it's covered over. But to me, it's just paper. It's a plain surface. If you want to use the actual fold piece you know the little protective cover you go right ahead for this one I just decided we're just going to use the cover it really does not matter but this is dry so now I'm going to show you you can if you want take you know take your little sander which we're going to do around the edges but when you get butted up around little sections like that you're just going to want to use a little bit of water and a paintbrush <laughs> Our little line is cut all the way across it makes me feel fuzzier inside okay and then we just have a little spot right here just gonna get that off this stuff is really easy to sand so you can just and this is a high grit it's 800 grit okay and I'm just going to and you can pull it down it doesn't matter it's not going to tear it any more than where you actually have see how it just pulls right off If you want to, you do not have to, but if you want to, which is what I'm going to do, you can see where the paper kind of ends right here and where the wood is. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that white paint and drag it over top of our print. This is just going to kind of blend this in a little bit and make it look like it's not torn and make it look like it's just on our wood. So you won't be able to see the tear as dominantly. I'm going to add a little bit of distressing here and we're just going to cheat with it using a Sharpie. You can absolutely take, this is just a lead pencil and go right kind of in where the sections are and it just makes it look a little bit more like the fences in the background our book is pretty much dry so I'm going to just sand off around the edges I also want to let y'all know that be mindful with whatever grit sandpaper you're using to go off around the edges because the lower the grit it is real possible it will scrape your paint and stuff like that or even rip really bad up into your paper. You don't have to go as extreme as I am with 800. You could probably use a 200 or 300. That would be fine as well. And don't be afraid to kind of sand down around the actual pattern. This is just going to help make it look like the pattern is for real into the book versus lapped around the side you know what I mean I really want to cover up these words and this is the part where I would normally like take a piece of clay and lay it over there but we're not going to do that today instead we are going to put a raised stencil on here I'm going to be using this distress texture paste by Tim Holtz if you have not met this stuff yet it is pretty amazing and super easy to use I love being able to mix paint with this stuff. This is also down in my description box. There's an Amazon affiliate link down there. I'm just going to take a little bit because a little bit really goes a long way and don't mind my dried up paint here. <laughs> Ignore it. You see nothing. And we're going to take what I think is the 
what I think is that color, <laughs> and pop a little bit of color in here. Just smoosh it on around, and it just takes a minute to get the color in. I think, I don't know people, does that look like it matches? I think it's too bright. Yeah, I might need to add something darker in with that. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of this green, this ivy green in here, I think. Look at it, just a squirt, just a dollop, little dab right there. Ugh. Let's hope I didn't make it look pukey. I don't want it to be puke green. See what happens when you overthink things? I think I got that. I think that color is almost spot one right there. All right, well, we'll know. We'll know once it dries. I'm going to plop this. Ah! <laughs> Oops. Stay still, book. Come on. Play games with me. I'm going to plop this up. I... This fall won't fit on there, but I want this happy, and we're going to use this fall. So I'm going to do two different ones and I'm going to get the painter's tape. You want to make sure whenever you're doing a raised stencil that you absolutely, if you're able to, because sometimes you can't, sometimes the, you know, sometimes it's just too small. You can tape it down so it doesn't move. Oh my God. Look at that. <laughs> I put it right down in the flipping. I'm sure y'all are so happy that you listened to me craft. <laughs> live while I'm just a hot mess over here oh my gosh I'm like I'm so much more put together in my Friday videos okay let me put that front one so y'all think I got it together okay okay let me let me just live in that ignorance okay so I think this is good enough we got our happy one here and here we go hold our breaths We're gonna have to fix that. I had to cut this other one up. So we're just gonna, I'm not taping this one down. Okay, I'm breaking my own rules here. I'm just gonna hold it because maybe that will work out better. Okay, stop. Oh my gosh, now I can't reach the paste. It's too far. Oh my gosh. Okay, got it. I got, I got some. Here we go. There we go. All right, we're doing all right. Here we go. Just keep going. Hold it down, Brandy. Oh, no! <laughs> okay, listen. I never said it was going to be a perfect thing here. Got it. It's almost there. We almost got it. <laughs> Do any, does anybody else stencil like this? Because I got to coach myself through the whole process, like, you got this. I need just a tiny smidge more. I didn't mix enough figures. I'm not going to get this color again. Like facts. You know what I mean? Like there is no way I'm going to be able to mix that color perfectly again to match that for this tiny little loop. So we're just going to have to improvise. All right. Let's, let's see. It's all or nothing here. Oh my gosh. You got to be kidding me. All right. Let's fix it. Grab a dotting tool and then quickly start scraping. Okay, just quickly start scraping it. If you ever make a mistake like this, and this goes with anything, it does not have to just be like a raised stencil and you got to go back over it. Make sure that you're using the same exact paint. These books are an awesome idea to sell if you are a vendor or you're just trying to put little, you know, little pieces out into the world for your homemade business. Little DIY books like this are always a great idea. If you want to get extra creative, you can always bring in stamps. And if you're not hanging out with me 
on my brows and channel. I like to point this out. I am that channel complements this channel. I share a lot of things that I purchase and things that you can find in different stores that maybe you know you didn't know. One thing I like to share in Hobby Lobby is how you can get stamps there for a little bit of nothing if you pop in and check out their craft area. Okay, so you can definitely grab some little pieces and have yourself a nice little collection. My last um, browsing that I did up in there, I found some awesome little finds. I decided I couldn't leave this alone and I'm going around the edges with some gold gilding wax, but I'm happy with this basically. Just, you know, I like to put gilding wax on everything. I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, we are all finished with this piece. Now it's time to seal over it because we want everything to, you know, kind of stay in place. And you could also wait to put the gilding wax on. You really probably, I'm not going to seal over this might cause issues but I do like I said I'm not selling this or anything but for you if you're going to put gilding wax over this make sure you do that after you apply your sealer and in case you wonder why this is a wax and it's pretty much its own sealer so you don't really need to do anything to it it can go on last bring our fence piece back in and I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to wear a little bit I know it's completely dry and then seal right on over it. I'm going to zoom in real quick here so you guys can really see how amazing this paper looks. Even blended in with a little bit of paint. It is on here and really, really hard to notice any differentiation between the background and our print. I'm really happy with how this little piece turned out. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this one. People, I love books, so this just came out so gorgeous to me. Let me know in the comments below if you guys enjoyed our little chatting and crafting using the TDS brand decoupage paper. Let me know in the comments below what you might be interested in seeing me use the TDS decoupage paper on next. And until next time.